I'm not going to record during the when it's playing, but I gotta get this intro in. Okay. Tanner is gonna berate me later. <laughs> okay. Hi. This is my. I know you all, so I'm not. Okay. This is my senior capstone presentation. 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 Um. Uh, what I've been working on all year, and technically for two years, is um, putting together a radio drama, a uh, long form, large cast, um, using traditional methods of rehearsal in a modern sense, in that you rehearse over Skype instead of in person, because all my actors are from all over the place, which is actually super cool. Mm -hmm. um, and the more modern sense in that podcasting has really taken off. I know that some of you listen to podcasts, some of you, This American Life, maybe? No, I don't know. Uh, no, I'll Night Vale. Got to talk to Pete. Oh, he, yes. like podcast. Podcast Sophia's cool. friend is on Night Vale, too. She, yeah, yeah, she's a guest star. She's a, like a reoccurring character. It's so cool. That's really cool. Um, okay, so before I get into all that, I'm going to play the episode and then. Y'all can leave afterwards if you want to. <laughs> Here's some summary. This is actually the sixth episode in our series. Um, I was going to do the eighth, but that's the season finale, which is stupid of me to play, so I'm not going to do that. I'm doing the sixth episode, which is, has not been aired yet, and I personally think I'm still going to tweak it when this is done. I will be taking notes throughout. Um, some background, or, or the, the general synopsis of the series is, siblings Mike and Marie King are fresh out of school, ready for their usual run-of-the-mill summer vacation. However, close encounters of the freaky kind throw a wrench in their plans. Looks like they're not as alone in the universe as they thought. <laughs> Today's episode is the sixth in the series and focuses on the Kings and two of their friends they've brought into their little alien circle, Jules, who's another human, and Kalani, uh, an alien who hides in plain sight through the use of holograms. It's, if you actually listen to the series, it's complicated, I don't know. This is what happens when you come in the middle and you find an episode on TV. What? Um, <laughs> Within the world of the show, sometimes aliens come to live on Earth, whether because they need a change of scenery or because they're trying to escape some kind of dark past or political strife, refugee stuff, that lovely. Kalani is a second generation, one of those kinds. Um, but there's generally two rules if you move to Earth. One, you can't let the humans find out that you're an alien. And two, you must be registered with an organization which keeps track of aliens, both for their safety and ours. Um, <laughs> Episode synopsis, with the team assembled, this is, I don't know, with the team assembled, the kids are eager for more adventures of the extraterrestrial kind. However, a strange abduction makes it very clear that there are people out there who don't quite appreciate their enthusiasm. Also, let's not forget junkies, alien clubs, and lots and lots of weed. Not what you think. <laughs> um, so... That, uh, I'm not going to justify that to you. I know exactly what it is. You, you remember. I know what it is. Oh, oh you know what it is. I I'm going to... everything. <laughs> yeah, Mom's the only one that's updated on this. I'm going to stop this. Do you want the... Um... You are now leaving Project Stellar. Today's episode was written and directed by Leah Casey, featuring the voices of Josh Casey as Mike, Leah Casey as Marie, the Instant Gamer as Jules, Lily Liu as Kalani, Katrina Rouse as Titi, Jason Thomas as Azuaga, Angel Kiesel as Moreau, Mati Mali as Dr. Rons, Patrick De J. Delva as Cobb, and Rondell N. as Rudy. Thank you for listening.
I try to. Um, I need to ask before I get this. I do have a point to this question. Who's heard of Attack on Titan? Okay, good. Part of season one. Part of season one. Do you, do you watch it at all? Oh, oh man, it's so yeah, cool, man. but the animation is gorgeous. Um, it is. I have a point to this. Um, fan fiction? Fan fiction? Anyone? No? With there? Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just going to literally... We'll talk later. We'll talk later. <laughs> oh, I have a point to this. There is a point. <laughs> My mom's sitting in the corner. and then. <laughs> okay. Um, so I might as well start with how this all started, um, mainly with how I got into the whole audio stuff. Mm -hmm. She bought me the Chronicles of Audio radio drama by Focus on the Family, which is basically... Uh, audio landscape of awesomeness, way more <laughs> complex than this. Um, and I remember we, we listened to it in the car every year on the way to Thanksgiving and back, because um, we drive like six-ish hours to Ohio and back, and we just play these over and over again. The same ones, over and over again, but it just never gets old. I have notes here because I'm gonna forget about all this. Um, and it's really cool, actually, to evoke those kinds of images through sound, because when you build it, you have to realize also that not everyone is gonna have the same visual image as you, which is awesome. So you're not just creating one world, you're creating technically thousands of worlds, mm -hmm. depending on how many people are listening to your series. Um, how, how I started getting into this, uh, um, this is different from audiobooks, obviously. Audiobooks, mm -hmm. you've got one narrator, there's no music in the background, mm -hmm. they're, they're reading a story. Radio theater, you remember the old time radio shows, they come on at War that specific, the yes, yeah. War of the Worlds, like, they come on at that specific hour and you tune in next week for that if you're going episodic yeah. or they have like those standalone one shots. Um, but what got me interested in doing this was soft, perhaps sophomore year, I was, here's, here's my young millennial stuff. I was going through Tumblr and what came up on my dash was I was going through uh, Attack on Titan and what came up was, hey, we're holding auditions for a fan spinoff of Attack on Titan called Attack on Space, which is it takes a character from that and it sets them in space. Basically, it was just a giant fan audio fan fiction, Pretty which is cool. too awesome. So I said, Mom, I need to get a microphone. So we went to Target and we picked up this really crappy headset mic. <laughs> and I did my first audition that year. Oh, um, cool. Did not get picked. <laughs> I can list all the reasons why. but. Um, uh, then I got into the, uh, that was, that, so that was that, that was how I got into the world of, hey, there are these projects that people who are amateurs do online, this is before I discovered, like, podcasting, like, the more professional stuff, but these, yeah, yes, like, Night Vale, Wolf 359, um, all these things, and, um, uh, I realized that there are websites where you can go audition and just do these projects for fun, whether it's original material or fan mm -hmm. stuff. Obviously, as someone who's an anime junk, I was like, hey, let's go audition for the fan stuff. Um, got cast for a couple of them. They didn't take off, which, which I, will, I will explain why that's important about why, this, why people have stuck with me so long, why my theory. Um, so then I got into this series called Survey Corps, which is another spinoff of Attack on Titan, but it was about zombies. <laughs> and it was great because this, they were, they, they, they did it, and it was, the sound effects were great, but I remember sitting there listening, and if this ever gets out online, I'm so sorry, this is not me taking a dig at you guys. I think you guys are awesome. Um, I thought they could have tightened that up a bit, mm -hmm. or how could I make that sound effect better, or what could I have done here? So that was the whole interest in the technical side. Um, and I think the reason that my VAs have stuck with me this long is because the project actually took off is when you go onto those amateur sites and you audition, a lot of the people that are posting these projects don't get around to doing it, and they ghost you, and whatever. I did not ghost my people. I think that's why they stuck with me so long, I, I hope. Mm -hmm. Did you guys stick with me that long? I hope. Um, how this one specifically got started, Capstone, obviously, I needed to do something. Mm -hmm. Since I'm a theater major, I'm not in the sciences, everyone, they do like research and stuff. This was technically a research project. Um, but I started thinking about this way back when I was a sophomore. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was sitting in your class one day, and <laughs> I, I, I just suddenly came to me, I said, hey, so instead of doing like a theater thing, because that's what a lot of people in the honors college that are in theater majors uh, do, is they put on a show or they intern with another 
theater or something, um, instead of doing like a live action thing, can I do a radio drama? And you said yes. <laughs> so I ran with Back it. That's the record show. <laughs> and 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 um, obviously this was going to take a whole lot more work. Like I couldn't just go around. Like there was no one around here that does audio work because we don't do audio. Let this go on record. We should have a, a sound engineering class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. that's, class. that's true. Nobody really knows anything about sound engineering. There is something offered through music that theater can oh. Why did I not read this? <laughs> Do you know it now? No. Just now. Yes, oh, just now. Do you know any sound engineering from this project? Thank you for that question, Mom. You're so helpful. Here's the thing. <laughs> right? Yes, I do. I. Here's the thing. No, here's the thing. I. So I was like, okay, this is a big project. I'm clearly not going to be able to scrap this all together in 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 um, my senior year. This is when I'm a sophomore. So I say, hey, why don't I start learning how to do this now, so that when mm -hmm. senior year comes, yeah. I'll be prepared. So this is like two, three years in the making. Mm -hmm. So that summer, I. Uh, was searching for an idea, and what actually happened was in the very first episode by number, not the prologue episode, but the first episode of this series is a scene of the siblings cleaning up cat barf in the kitchen, and they're talking about what, uh, what they could do for a YouTube series, which is exactly how this got started, because Josh was bugging me about, hey, I need an idea, I want to do YouTube stuff, and I need an idea for this, and I wanted to marry it to sci-fi, so we thought, mm -hmm. why not? We were also watching Gravity Falls a lot, mm -hmm. binge watching it that summer. Um, so that's how that got started. Um, so well, as soon as I got the idea, I found a ratty notebook and I just went crazy with all the stuff. This is essentially the project Bible. It's got all, all the outline or the, all the summaries for the episodes from season, season one to five because I'm wishful. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, obviously it's going to change. How many episodes a season? It started out as 12 per season, but some of the episodes are long, mm -hmm. and so I split them in half. So actually, the number that's going to come out by the end of season one, B, is going to be more than 12, because we're already at, I've already got eight, not including the inner calorie episodes, yes. Does that include the episode zeros? Yeah, episode, episode zero or the prologue is included in season one. Mm -hmm. So I just went crazy with that, <laughs> yeah. So I got all the summer stuff. And then at the end of the summer, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go on these websites. I'm gonna post this audition. I'm gonna do this all for free because that was that's what I wanted to focus the research on: how mm -hmm. to make a how an artist can do this with uh, on a budget, without uh, paying anything. I, since I wanted to act, obviously I paid for my microphone. I've actually gone through several microphones trying mm -hmm. to find the right one. Here for me, Blue. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, got to got to junior year at the start. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start this and do a test run, and I chickened out. I didn't know jack squat about sound editing, so I'm not just gonna say, hey, I'm gonna put my main series out there and audition all these people and then keep them waiting for months on end, so whatever. So I wrote a precursor episode, which got split into three because it was so dang long, which actually took me all year to get around because I was still working my way through figuring out how to do this. And all the summer I'd been researching sound effects and music and the copyright li licenses because Oh, Obvious, yeah. Certain sounds yeah. are copyrighted. Oh my gosh, you have no idea. Um, because if, and eventually, like, eventually, this is never going to happen. But like, if you want to monetize your series, it's good to know what sounds are available, what you can use, because there are there are um, things where you're not allowed to do that. Um, they say no, you can't do that, or no, you can't remix our sound, even if you need it to be good. So I need to do that. So I found all these. Uh, resources, these websites that gave me sound and music for under the CC0 license, which means you may, they, may, they made it and they put it out in the public. You don't have to credit them. You don't have to no notify them that you're using whatever. So it's almost like public domain. Like yes, it's like very that. public domain. All, all the stuff that I use, except for the music, is public domain. And I will talk about why. And it's not that I'm a snob or that I don't want to mm -hmm. credit people. Uh, I'll just get on that now, is that you heard all the sound effects that were used. I can't keep track of all that. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're all coming from different sources. All these people, all these different sources are putting them into this and I can't keep track of what I use. And it's gonna change every time. So I wanted something where I didn't have to do that. Music is different, mm -hmm. obviously. I, that's easy to keep track of. And, yeah. I, and so I, when I use music, um, 
I find ones that it's, it's attribution only. It's really actually difficult to find quality CCCR music. Not that I can try, trust me. Um, anyway, I spent junior year putting together the prologue. By the summer, I was like, okay, I got this. So that summer, I auditioned people as I proposed in my project uh, for the Honors College, and that was about the time that I turned in. So the summer, I auditioned and I got people. Let's talk about the Canadians <laughs> and the South Africans and the Brits. Uh, where else are they from? Hey. Um, there, there are people all over the globe. They're South Africans? Yeah, not in not this in one. This uh, I'm not going to get in it. Chez is super cool. And he's so loyal. He, he, he stayed up for a rehearsal. He sat in on a rehearsal that wasn't even his when it was 4 a.m. over there. And it was whatever time during the afternoon here. Because it was like an eight-hour difference between us. He was so, he's so awesome. Him and I, there, are a bunch of, there are a bunch of people that are super loyal. And I'm so grateful for them. And again, I think my theory is because they know that I'm not going to ghost them. Right, like, you're gonna keep with this yeah, and if for some reason I have to stop, I will tell them because I made it perfectly clear. Contact me. So when you record this, it's all these people are in different countries. Do you send them a script of like only, or do you like Skype and everybody's yeah doing it together? That's this is cool. great. Let's talk about this. This <laughs> is what happened. This is what I did the rehearsal stuff between um, summer and and first semester this year. I write the script, and then I send it to them. And then I say, okay, send me times that you're available to rehearse with me. Preferably, I wanted them all to be in the same room uh, when they rehearsed so they could hear each other. Obviously, that wasn't going to happen because there's so many, I'm juggling so many different time zones. But I have gotten a lot of group, uh, most, a majority of the rehearsals were group rehearsals. And if not, then if I had a one-on-one -on -one rehearsal, it would be good because, uh, they'd still be having someone to rehearse with. So obviously, uh, if I'd heard someone that's in the scene with them, and I've rehearsed with them before, and I know what they sounded like, how they did the lines, then the next person I rehearsed with, here, this is what they kind of sounded like. I'm doing the, their attitude that they gave in the lines. So you have that to go off of. But I really tried to organize the, the rehearsals where I had them in the, in the same room um, at the same time over Skype. Um, and so they either could record during the rehearsal so that they didn't have to go off later and record by themselves. Or if they couldn't record during the rehearsal because their environment was noisy or something, um, then once the rehearsal was over, later that day or another day in the week, they'd go off and they'd have the script and they'd record. And if they forgot how they delivered a line, they'd have a copy of the rehearsal to go back to reference how they delivered it, how their scene partner responded, blah, blah, blah. Because with a lot of the, yes. But no, I was just gonna say, that's just so cool being yeah. somebody who's in like rural Canada and just is yeah. not, you know what I mean? They can still be a part of these projects and not have to worry about flying to be in the room with people. Yeah. That's um, cool. Yeah, because a lot of the, like the podcasts that I listen to, those people live in the same area, so they can all get together in the same room and, and do this stuff, like in traditional radio dramas. But, um, well, it's amazing how live, I mean, I think the, the Skype rehearsal is critical. And do they then, you're saying if they are in a quiet room, of their own during the Skype rehearsal, they can actually lift their track from the rehearsal. Yep. Yep. Well, no, no wonder it sounds so good because if even the two or three of, say, the is it four kids usually traveling together? Well, that's they, a recent bring, development, but yeah. It's but, but say it's four. If even two of them, I mean, because it, it sounds like dialogue, it sounds like they're in the same place, which oh, is good. kind of remarkable that's given nice. that they're not, but I think that rehearsal is critical, and if even two of them can lift the track, and the others have recorded it, then they know what they've heard. Mm -hmm. I'm curious then, though, about your splicing to get dialogue that feels like, because that's something <laughs> that's you can do yeah. live, that is, that's got to be much harder with just room tone, and a sense of environmental tone behind, so that that sense of when we speak and you go, mm-hmm, Right, and splice that in without it going, yeah. without it going, room tone, no room tone, room tone, yeah. dead. That's I mean, the, that's do the you also of edit to take out and get your oh room gosh, tone? Oh gosh, you have no idea. I, because I've played with just audacity a little bit. And it's, yeah, there's a noise removal function. Yeah. That, so 
Yes, that's why that's why I took all of June here. But it here. also cannot sound too, too flat. The background can't sound too flat. To no, and, and that's why there are, fun, there are um, effects that you can put in to, okay. to create, like, depending on the environment. You can take out all the noise reduction yep. so that you can splice them so that it does sound like they're overlapping each other. Because mm -hmm. there's plenty of times where they were. I mean, it sounded like that's they were. That's why I thought they were, like, interaction. Hmm. Right? Yeah. No, so that's what. So that's your brilliant editing. I hope so. <laughs> that's, why, that's why when I was listening to Survey Corpse, and I was like, I think I can do that too, can't I? Um, do you know her? Uh, yeah. Give me a lot. Yeah. A bit of perfectionist so you're not, yes. over there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, and. Um, Nothing done half assed, shall we? No, I try not to. Um, <laughs> uh, when. I don't know, you, you probably heard it, it was obvious. Um, yeah. It's not it's not the the, the splicing the lines together that was my problem. It was really was that their equipment. Um, so if you heard some of them sound a little, little different, and I did a lot of work. Some tried. might sound more muted. One, yeah, yeah, one and I really tried. Believe muted. me, I pulled all the tricks out of my hat to do to, to try and make it sound better. And this is this is the best I could do, which is fine. I've heard perfect. But it sounds like <laughs> what I thought it was. These guys always thought they sounded a little bit odd. <laughs> Oh, like kind of in space, I thought like he was just. Oh no no no! I'm not talking about that. It's oh okay. <laughs> okay, maybe this is weird. When I hear sound, I get an image of what their voice sounds like. So if someone's microphone makes them sound a little muted, it I just get this image of them talking with a sock covering their face. Yep, sure. And so I I can hear. I'm pretty sure you guys heard it. But yeah I, I yeah yeah. Know. But um. Wasn't your brother? Was it? Was no 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 no. It was. It, Anyway, no, but they know me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna talk about this. Um, I will say though, though, it's it's really important though that their equipment is is on par, sort of, with a with a with a good sound quality because you can have the best audition in the world, but for for an audio thing or like if you're doing audiobooks, um, you can have the best audition in the world, but if your equipment sucks, you're probably gonna lose the part. Especially like if you're the one, if you're putting out there, I'm the one that's gonna be doing the editing. Well, you didn't edit this properly. Why would we cast you? Um, obviously, I, I fudged. I fudged it a little because some of the auditions were great, and I'm like, I can work with that. I can fix that probably, and I sort of did. Um, so yeah, that was what the rehearsal editing process was like. It, it kind of, it was. Way to go! That's like. Oh yeah, yeah it's like it's a very it's like the story's got an arc, and yeah. I like how there are different different scenes. Or different relationships with people, and it's very clear. Like, there's like evil, like somebody likes the new one girl, mm -hmm. one guy likes your character, but it was like a group of the okay. friends, but then it was all these other side plots and stuff, and it was it was easy to follow all of it. Oh, good. Which is hard to do in radio drama yeah. because an audiobook can stay, they look narrate. at each other yeah. and narrate it, and that's yeah. why audiobooks are so popular, but this is a play without being able to see it. See all the things in there is a little voiceover, so there is the yes. muted trumpet thing. So yes. there was just little bits of reflecting on yes, reflecting that narrative. Back. So there is some sense of a future voice reflecting back. Yes, right? um, because and that was that was the kind of thing that I wanted to do. Um, the thing about the, the the they looked at them, and uh, Sarah was talking about this in class too. Like mm -hmm. they're not you're not going to believe those stage directions do that. Yeah, yeah. But I actually write it like that. I write it like a novel. The scripts. And I say they give. He's silent for a moment. He stares pensive or whatever. But because because it sets the mood, and I'm yeah. not there in the room mm -hmm. with these right. people. We're not yeah, looking we at each other's face. We only do voice things. Mm -hmm. I think a few of them will see my face like once mm -hmm. or twice. <laughs> um, but I write it like that. I want to give them as much help as possible. I want to give mm -hmm. myself an advantage and them an advantage. I rarely have to ask for retakes because of the rehearsals. Yep. If I ask for retakes, it's because of a pronunciation thing, which we do go over in rehearsals, and then sometimes I forget. Yadril. Listen, you have no idea how much all that yes, Some, It's no joke. I've got enough gag material to, to fill up an entire day of how many times it's been a joke. Um, but yeah, the sound design kind of sucks. Um, music. Let's talk about the music for a second. Uh, the licenses, obviously, find something, blah, blah, blah. Find some, I find stuff that, if I'm allowed to, I can make money off of. I'm not going to make money off of this, because 
I don't know anything about that. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know who would get paid what and whatever. This is just for free. I'm just doing this for fun, man. Also, it's cool, but mm -hmm. it's fun. The the music for the show, the show's title theme. The original title theme of the show was let's see if it'll play. This was the original thing. This is when I thought I could compose crap. <laughs> no, 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 it's not about... <laughs> so this was the original, this was what I had thought was the original theme. Or... I'll talk with Jason in a minute. Not this Jason. I'll get back to that. So that was the original theme. Uh, what, what I had come up with as a base. The next thing that I came up with was for the prologue, which was the three episodes before this whole main series started, which was... did on my little electric keyboard, and it had this really eerie, nostalgic kind of feel. Also, it was slow, so I cut some of it. But it turned out all right. Mm -hmm. So it's just that it's like the idea of being here. Yeah. Just kind of moving. So, yeah, like that sort of star thing. Yeah. Um, but this, this, doesn't have, this doesn't have forward motion. Um, So this was the original theme. When you say theme, you mean opening theme? Yes, or the opening or and closing theme. That goes through or like a motif and, and this was when I when I was when I was like, hey, I kinda know how to play the piano. I've got a keyboard full of uh, instruments, sort of. I could do it. No, it sounds like crap. It 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 I can't do this. It's it's horrible. So this was this was what I, but this actually came out well, uh, pretty pretty well, uh, when I cut out the slowness. And so I used that for the prologue. About a week before I released episode one, not episode zero, blah, 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 or not the prologue, episode one, one of my VAs, these, I'm going to say his name because Jason Thomas is with this band called Precog it's in some southern state, I think, Nashville, I don't know. <laughs> Um, not the Jason Thomas on WXRT. No, no, Jason Thomas, who played the agent, who played the agent that what came into the room and blah blah blah. Um, so I knew he was in a band, um, uh, and he we talked about uh, when he came in and the, my first rehearsal with him. I think he says to me, "Hey, so I do music. Um, if you ever need anyone to compose something for you, hit me up. We'll talk." And at this point, I had episodes, uh, and so I'm like, "Yeah, cool." And I never got around to it because school and shows, and I'm still trying to figure this thing out. Um, so about a week before episode one comes up, I get this email from him. He's turning in his lines for episode eight, I think. Um, and he goes, hey, so here are my lines. And also, I was just messing around. I heard your theme from your original three episodes, and I just wanted to mess around and so here's the theme for you. Wow. He I sat on my couch and I just started crying oh. the second I heard it. Because I could hear asteroids and stardust yes. and just these but vibrant it's the original yeah. too. And he just and it wasn't just the theme, he went on to all these different motifs in the music. I'm gonna let this play in the background because yeah. I just love it so much. Hey. So cool. <laughs> um um, so I said, uh, th and he sent me a first draft. This is the final draft, but he sent me like three different drafts of it. Um, that he was willing to, to go that far to let me ask for like edits or something. So he gave me draft one. I sat, I cried, I even them back. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, I'm crying. It's so like, oh no, don't cry, I'm gonna still work on it. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Yes, no, seriously, though, because it evokes such right? imagery. That's why I was right. <laughs> and so he got back, and he, he actually valued my input um, because he let, he let me ask for, like, changes to the music, and he did it, and this is the final cost. It's so cool. And I still haven't found a space in the series where I can feature the full song. I'm trying, I'm just waiting for that right scene, because I can only do, like, the intro of the, of the, of the music for the, because I'm 
And, and so he did, I, I finally asked him for one of the episodes, can you compose some music for us? So the entire, for the whole episode, he did, it was in our, in our, in our, in our Cali episode, which were like short 10 minute things. And so he's like, sure, totally. So in a week he cranked out all this music for this thing. And I used every single piece because I was like, oh my gosh, it was so, because it actually fit the scene. I sent him a, a finished rough draft of the audio with sound effects and he composed based on the script and what he was doing. So we used that music and now I can reuse that music for other stuff. Um, hopefully this summer for season 1B I can talk to him about, there's, a, there's an episode I really want specific music for. So. Um, but yeah, it's just so great to have not just like that, but also my voice actors who have stuck with me for two years. My, I call them my, my veterans from the original prologue. They're still waiting around, even if their characters haven't been heard in ages. The guy Cobb, who, who's the, the alien in the alley, I haven't heard his character since the prologue. What, what else was in the prologue part three? Yeah, since, since the third part of the prologue. He's been a... I've listened to her. She's listened to her a lot. Many times. I keep telling her to listen to Wolf 359 or something else. Well, this can't get it anymore. Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, Watch because of the, yeah. yeah. Oh, all right, I'll catch you up. But I catch something every time. It's like, well, now I just listen to it as behind the scenes. But I do catch something new. We have a writer. Uh, I'm actually a writer. Not so good with this series right no, now. You, even, you even said I was sloppy this time. I know I was. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. I, I know you, I know what you can do. Her first year her episode zero, it's the, the detail that you'll find it goes all the way back. So the detail thing, mm -hmm. episode eight, you can find something in episode zero or one. So what happens is it's just a story and it's she's been like this. She's sick of this picture and she's gonna work on this piece. Mm -hmm. She's got the whole outline done for 59 series. No. I'm exaggerating. Which makes I'm me not, we're not supernatural. Okay. Suggest that the <laughs> she's, actually she's actually a writer. She's actually a writer. Hey, we're getting season 13, man. She's I will. Talk about I will. Season uh, six, man. I can't. I know. I just saw the season no, finale for season part. something <laughs> whatever it's no sponsored. <laughs> All the plot lines later. Sam! Sam! <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was my guilty pleasure. That's supernatural. Yeah. Don't yeah. spoil it. I'm behind on that. I'm not. I haven't watched, although an episode from an epi a se from season. Um. Yeah. So, so I am. I am just going to suggest, with an arc that long, that you that you look into that you do research monetizing because it, I, I if you, it's worth researching how other people have moved in a what's still a fairly new economy. Of, of releasing material, like what do people do? Do they release a first series free? Do they need, what is the distribution? Does it have to go through Audible or Apple or blah, blah, blah? Or, you know, I mean, there are plenty of free platforms. If you were offering it for free, what's the first mm -hmm. platform and distribution? Yeah, uh, promotion, so marketing, right, about that. Yes. The guidelines. The, the guidelines that I set for Project Stellar were do it all for free, minus the microphone because I actually want to be in it because I'm a narcissist. Um, <clears throat> but the, the guidelines were don't pay anything for because budget, right. Mm -hmm. So I found all the sound effects, the music, great. Promotion, I put this on YouTube because that was literally probably the only free platform I could find. So I finally mm -hmm. caved a couple months ago and I got the clear from Tamara. I was gonna do it anyway, but I wanted to do it now. Um, to put the series up on Libsyn, which is a, it's like a podcasting website that, that sends your stuff to iTunes, to all the podcatcher sites, which you can find us on now. Hey, listen to us on iTunes. Oh, Project Sellers on iTunes? Yeah, we're on iTunes. Uh, we're actually a couple, uh, the episodes on iTunes are a couple episodes behind, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to on YouTube, so actually YouTube stuff is already out. Um, I don't know how many like listeners or I don't know how it works like subscribers. Yeah, yeah. Like not subscribers. Out. That's not because I got Money. basic stats. They give you a, a if you're going with the basic plan, it's five dollars a month, which mm -hmm. is really cool. It's super yeah. great. I'm on the fifteen dollars a month plan just because I wanted the space to upload as many episodes because it's got a lot and it takes up a lot of space. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really crap at promotion. So. <laughs> We don't have a lot of listeners. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I just, I'm just doing this for fun. 
Um, I'll tell you a secret. I cheat. I um, anything that I write, most almost anything that I write, is set within the same universe. I told you this. Set mm -hmm. within the same universe slash multiverse of whatever. Just because I'm unhealthily obsessed with whatever's me. Yeah. There's this. I got the idea from this author named Ted Decker, who every book that he wrote even though they were separate series, you'd sometimes see crossovers into those other worlds. And it was just, I just latched onto the idea and mm -hmm. I knew. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> 12 shows. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Well, well me, now we're getting to it. is the three minutes that I watched of Chicago Justice. That's <laughs> like, <laughs> expositionary writing number one. Uh. <laughs> You know, it's like if they can make money on broadcast TV with yeah, yeah. You know, you've got to get out of the fire. Really, I'm seeing the fire on TV. <laughs> like you don't have to say the word fire. Like we see that it's television. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> on on audio. Thank you for telling me it's a fire. Yeah, no, it has. I I it's try to man. I try to keep. I, if I want to talk about aliens, I want to do. I want to talk. I want to describe them. I want. I want the the audience to see. What do you hear? I guess. What do you hear? Okay. Hey, I brought some brownies. If anyone wants them, they're in my bag. What did you I hear? I see like three people talking and then literally something. And that's what's fun about it is if you're not saying it's big and green, it's I can hear it, mm. but I get to picture what I think it is. And I can just picture uh, some dudes like, what? And then it turns around. Like that's just such like a fun thing. Something trope. in water, I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, the and something with a, with a clack. A, I was going between Rattlesnake Tail and the same sort of growl in a I'm not going to yeah. tell you how I make alien sound effects. Because then I heard Jaws of it. Yeah. <laughs> that's why it's so Jaws, fun. interesting, interesting. Mm. I like that imagery. So. I like being able to picture my own interpretation. Yeah. So yeah. I like what did I tell you? I told about the one guy, like, he's got horns, he's red. That's all I needed. It was yeah. just hearing the voice and the size. It's fun for the listener to, like, just come up the first thing they think of. Mm -hmm. But still getting those details to be able to then differentiate between all like the Like a reaction shot. Yeah. I find when I see less of a creature, like on screen or something, when I see less of a creature, that's why towards the end of the film, when they finally reveal what it looks like, it's like the, the terror that exactly. I, it evokes, it goes away. There's this great episode of this podcast called Wolf 359, where they have a spider, and it's poisonous, and it's creeping... Oh, I'm sorry. They, yeah. Okay. Um, they have this... There's this, this is spider, and it's poisonous, and it's, it's crawling around this lab, this secret mm -hmm. lab that they just discovered. And you can't see it, but they take actual sound effects. Do you know what a spider sounds like up close? No. It no, actually no, no, no. makes these really strange no. clacking noises. No. Yes, yes. And it, it's like no. micro focus. Sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> the point is the image, the image that sound can provoke without a visual is a lot more terrifying. Mm -hmm. um, what else do I have in here? What else is in here that I can, can I? I always thought of that about horror. It's, it's like my favorite genre. Mm -hmm. But once the people are scared of it revealed, the power is gone. Because yeah, right. the true power of fear is not knowing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like that. Because it's like, I don't, I can't see it. So it's like, I'm more scared. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Then let's see. Let's try this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's great. Bye. Oh, you guys have your beer. Thing, thing, <laughs> your thing to go to. These are humans with superpowers. What do you hear? Vernon Wu, subject 325, 
They're, they've got super superpowers. Oh, so they're making the noise. They're yes. Yeah, um, oh. There's there's a uh, there's expositional f information given yes. later. Oh, is it? I'm so sorry. Here I thought we were just to being friends. You nearly took my hat. So off she, he's got her trapped in something. No, I think a couple bolts of electricity might fire up those dying neurons inside her head. Oh. Oh, wow. Doc, Doc, make him let go. So call me that. That that's uh. What was this? Oh, I'm gonna skip this one. Oh, this is that same. Really? You all right? Oh dear, it's gonna get loud. You're gonna be sick. What the hell is that? I know that music because a lot of this music comes from the from the YouTube audio library, which like gamers use when they're playing in the backgrounds when they're going through walkthroughs. So it's like it's like why do you have? Okay, we're gonna skip. I've got one more. Oh, this is my this is the this is a compilation of what do you hear versus and best scenes that like a lot of technical whatever went into this, which is super. Bleh. This is my favorite. They're at a public swimming pool. Outdoor. I know. Ricardo, I know you can swim faster than you. Ricardo, friend. Mike dove in after him. The kid had floaties on, but he was still little. It was still really dark. But not enough that we couldn't see that the thing at the bottom of the pool was doing more than just punching. It was starting to swim to where the kid went under. And then everyone started screaming, and the lifeguards were shouting that the people needed to get out of the pool. And I was <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot about the expo. <laughs> Obviously, I have to give expositional information. You have to. Like, you can tell it's them talking about the past, so it's not like a narrator. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. But it's still providing that content. I got you. Um, so, here we are at the end of my academic road. Uh, <laughs> this series, I'm going to keep going past graduation because this is actually feeding into this world building stuff that I've been doing since I was sixth, seventh grade. It's all still set in the same universe because mm-hmm. I just was really stubborn. But the not even the like the characters and the organization and stuff, it's all information that I can use later. I'm building myself a world so that when I want to publish my book, I have all this background information that I can pull from. Um, I still intend to hold, there's always going to be new characters popping up. There's going to be, I'm going to be holding auditions for these people for however long it takes. And I'll recycle people. Some people are going to, never mind. Um, I mean, we've got, we've had, we've had people, we've had, I meant the characters. That was, no, no, that was for the characters. Uh, I, I left, uh, characters, people. Oh yeah. Some of my VAs have moved on. Like, um, like some of them got tired of waiting around just to be used again, which is fine. I mean, this isn't going to take up, this isn't like a paying job. You're not going to take up all your life, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I got new voices, actually a few, a couple times I've used people in the department here, Mm -hmm. um, to fill in for voice actors who had moved on or voice actors who didn't get their lines in on time. Yes, that is a problem sometimes. Like, um, I used Andy Muriel, if y'all remember, and Bianca Corral. She's not here, so I can't embarrass her. I'm not going to bother playing the episode she was in. It's boring anyway. Um, no, she did great. Uh, yeah, I look forward to getting better at this stuff. Oh, you say that now. <laughs> Ever since I like listened to War of the Worlds for season two, I just thought radio drama is such an interesting medium. Oh, mm-hmm. right. Here's what I gotta say you about radio drama. Every Saturday. Mm-hmm. The BBC. I just forget yeah. that that's how Americans like that was the entertainment before the TV around came the radio, out. Mm-hmm. and that was it. That was your movie CD. That was like your stories every week. The whole country. I love. Look, aliens. Yeah, because that's like how the that's how they kept the story going. Was like breaking now. Was like, and if people had just tuned in, then they missed the warning at the beginning that said, "This is just a ra- this is just a radio show." That's funny. Uh, it was it was it was great. You just reminded me. I remember now why I also got into this before all that Chronicles of Narnia stuff. That when we when I got babysat at that place, it's. We they they have the radio on instead of the TV and we'd listen to like it wasn't Little House on the Prairie but it was like one of those old timey sitting in a cabin right. Jeb we gotta cut the logs now and skip the <laughs> I don't know that's how that's how it started um, yeah what was I gonna say right the thing about this is what this is my closing statement because I don't have anything what I love about radio dramas is that it's the fastest way, if you are an artistic, creative, writer sort of person, it is the fastest way to bring your characters to life. With books, you have to sit around and wait to get published to get an agent. Mm -hmm. If for TV, you have to wait, you have to go through, you're not even sure if your script's gonna be picked up. If you're doing this at home for an artist on a budget, you can breathe life into your characters and make hundreds of people see not quite what you see, but their own interpretation, which is really beautiful. Um, that's it. Burning questions that people have, and you asked some along the way. Yeah, please. I feel like as the faculty fellow, uh, <laughs> did I go off track this time? No, I did not. <laughs> I did not. I was right. Sadly, uh, the worst. Yeah, way to incredibly professional sounding. Yeah. Very good sharp. Yeah. Oh, good. No, it still needs work. I took notes. Good? Du- yes, I hope so. Jeez, it took me forever to learn. That's the worst thing about these sound platforms is you can't, they're all different. No, they're all different too. And it's not like, it's not like 
as as Rick was saying to me yesterday, it's not like lighting where if you go, you learn lighting in one place, it's going to be universally technically the same doing the lighting in right. the theaters around here as it opposed to. Sounds so different. I remember for our directing project last year, Sandra had a boyfriend at the time who was like a DJ. Oh yeah. He knew like editing really well, and he put together this like crazy thing. Absolutely. <laughs> Or was he? I know he was just visiting for a I time. Think so. He was like from around here, and he just because he like does that type mm-hmm. of electronic music where he you know plays other instruments and yeah. all together. He was able to put together this whole soundscape, and everybody in the apartment was like, "What?" Like nobody knew how to do that. And I just think it's cool that you kind of figured it out and taught yourself how to do it. Yeah. The sound is such a weird medium to work with because how do you edit things to get people to listen to it mm-hmm. five thousand times? Or I know. I ended up talking to myself when I did this because it's just you. You need a quiet space. It's just you and the voices that are not quite inside your head. <laughs> You're just going nuts, like, oh. I'm serious. My roommates have stopped by my door. Who are you talking to? No one. Just go. Just go. It's great. Um, yeah, let me know more if it's on. Dude, totally. Season season one B is gonna be better. Got some awesome villains that are coming in. Not from Iris, sorry. They're like secondary. I know, like, I kept this question about these Pilates around. Okay, fine. <laughs> I, I just thought the plot line is. Um, mm. Listen, I already spoiled Walking Dead for you. What more do you want from me? <laughs> okay, you're gonna. Okay, you're gonna try and forget about that. That's good. Put that trauma <laughs> in your mind. Um, ça va? No, no. Ça va. Ça va. So, Good, say fantastique. I have a blooper reel that I'm going to play for you so you can hear <laughs> what happened. <laughs> no, not with, with all of them, actually. It's like there's so much pronunciation crap going on. She's, she got bullied in this department just listed as a comedy, and it's like surprisingly, um, there's some things in the department and the, the VA section in this movie, so I don't know if she bullied her into it like or was just oh. like, Vernon, he's great. I need to write him back in. He's, he's, they're actually, yeah, some of them, well, some of the characters are based off of people in the department. (laughs) Not gonna say who. Not gonna say who. Um, I'm gonna turn this off. Whatever happens after this is gonna be off record, I think. Bye. Bye.